I think we're a little slow in coming in today. Everybody's probably loaded down with turkey and dressing. We ready? Are we on? All right, I want to welcome you to Ascent Bible Church and thank you for joining us to worship today. There's a lot of stuff going on, not only in the world, but in individual lives. And sometimes we can lose sight of the God that we serve and the truth about him. But in Isaiah chapter 40, we are reminded by God himself. He says, to whom will you compare me? And who is my equal? Lift your eyes and look to the heavens. Do that tonight if there's no clouds. Lift your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who calls out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel, my way is hidden from my God, and my cause is disregarded by my God. He does not grow weary or tired, and his understanding no one can fathom. Even youths grow weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And so as, as you're facing trials, as the world is facing trials, let's remember that the God of all creation is the God we worship. He has all the power. He has all the wisdom. He has the strength, the endurance, but most of all, he has the love for everyone in this place, you personally. And if you look to him and if you trust him, he will carry you through to the final conclusion. Let's pray. Father, this is a day of thanksgiving. This has been a week of thanksgiving. And we, each one, we can find in our heart many, many, many things to thank you for. But most of all, we thank you for loving us, for sending Christ to die for us, for being there, for living within us by the power of the Holy Spirit, and for giving us hope in hopeless times. And I pray, Lord, today that as we lift up our voices to you in song, as we hear your word, as we give our personal testimony, that we would see you for who you really are and glorify you and give thanks and praise to you, for you are worthy. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, church. It's good to see you. And I uh, hope you had a great Thanksgiving with family and friends. This uh, morning, <coughs> excuse me. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different. It's going to be your opportunity to raise your voice in thanksgiving to God on a personal basis. Uh, this morning as we were in prayer, as we were ending up, um, Pastor John mentioned a particular passage <coughs> Excuse me, that um, we're going to be using this morning. And um, as I was getting ready for worship this morning at 7, looking at some passages, it just happened to be the same passage John was talking about. That's Psalm 107. And this is what it says. I want you to listen carefully. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. <clears throat> for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, they wandered in the wilderness in solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted in them. 
And they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of distress. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul, and he filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, thank you that we can raise our voices now to you. You are a great God. You've done great things. And we're so thankful, Father, that we can gather this specific day to declare again, God, your goodness. Thank you, Father, for blessing us beyond measure. In Jesus' name, God, we pray. Let's stand. to start this over.
will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Sing it out, church. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great. Father, we just thank you, God, for this day, Lord. We have so much, um, so much to be thankful for, and yet the enemy is going to always be right there to re remind us how little we have, how much we don't have, how negative things are. But God, when we stop that, Lord, and we look up and we see your face, God, we can know, God, that you have us, and you're going to take care of our every need, Lord God. You are so worthy, Lord God, of all praise, all glory, and all honor, Lord God. And so we thank you this day, Lord God. Lord, help us today to live a life that reflects you in every way that others will notice that in us, God. So, Lord, we sing this song, giving you praise and thanking you for each day, each minute that we have to live and breathe, to tell somebody else about you, God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.
draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending yes i will ten thousand
are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of Father, you are on the throne, and we just uh, we seek you, and, and we're just grateful for your presence even now, Lord God, as we, we have what we think might be difficulties, but we just know that your love is pure, your love is true, and we're just going to, we're just going to proclaim your goodness and your greatness and just how grateful we are for who you are, Lord God. Amen.
Thank you, just despite these technical difficulties that <laughs> um, we're still able to just come and worship you. And um, and we we don't need the sound system. We don't need mics to worship you. And, um, and I just thank you for being our father, for being our king. And, um, and we just give you praise today.
for giving us just the breath in our lungs. We thank you for giving us this opportunity this season where we can be thankful to you for everything that you've blessed us with, Lord. I pray that we would just continue on with our love for you and that you would guide and protect this sermon. In your name I pray. So good morning, everyone. Just, uh, I'm grateful for our praise team in that set. It was just, uh, if ever, an opportunity to just prepare our hearts, uh, not just for whatever the Lord has for us out of his word this morning, but also to just come before him with grateful hearts. We have so, so much to be thankful for. Um, I'm especially grateful and so what we thought we would do today as a church is just um, spend some time together, just expressing our gratitude to our Savior. My, one of my favorite authors ever, Oswald Chambers, wrote these words, the thing that awakens the deepest fountain of gratitude in a human being is that God has forgiven his sin. Once a person realizes that it costs God what it caused God to forgive you, you will be held in a vice constrained by the love of God, resulting in a thankful heart. We have so much, so, so much to be grateful for because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for each and every one of us on that cross. But we all know and we accept the fact that his grace not just saves us, but it also sustains us. And what I thought we would do this morning as a church as we express our gratitude, is just to give you guys an opportunity as well to come up here and just um, share your heart about whatever it is that you may be grateful for. So we were gonna, we're going to use Bethany's mic, and uh, in a minute we're going to invite whoever the Lord leads to be up here to come up here to just um, share whatever it is that God lays on your heart about um, who He is and what He continues. To do in our lives. As I look back at this year, we have been through so much as a church. Um, so many things going on in a lot of your lives. Personally, my wife and I in our personal lives, our little grandson went through open heart surgery back in June. And to see the recovery that he was able to realize in such a short period of time, man, I'm just blown away to this day at how grateful I am. I'll never forget that Monday that we left him and he was still in intensive care as he finally sat up after three days of being wired up to all kinds of machines and everything. And he looked and he sat, they sat him up because he was choking just a tad, just a little bit. And as I looked in his eyes, I could see this pain and this suffering that this little 18-month-old child was going through and... Um, I remember getting in the car as we were driving back to Santa Fe because we had to get back and just crying out to God and just weeping and begging God to heal this little guy physically. And I'll never forget that evening. They FaceTimed us from Presbyterian Hospital in Albuquerque and he was up, sitting up, smiling and laughing a mere seven hours after that whole ordeal and can't tell you how good and how gracious our Lord is. And everybody in this room, we have so much, so, so much to be thankful for. And I just want to share a couple thoughts, a few thoughts. And Pastor Mike already kind of set the stage for us because the 107th Psalm is one of those profound chapters, one of those significant chapters in the Word of God that say so much to us about what it means to be thankful and I think the heart of a grateful heart comes down to realizing 
not just what the Thanksgiving holiday is about, but why we even celebrate Thanksgiving. And we're reminded in the passage about why we even come together on as a nation, as a people, um, to really just come before the Lord and be grateful. To celebrate Thanksgiving for the sake of Thanksgiving, and I realize for a lot of people it's about food, it's about football, it's about all the craziness that we as a consumer materialistic society have created these holidays to be, but at the end of the day, there's no greater biblical holiday than Thanksgiving, I believe, because of what it represents, because of who God is in our lives, and the psalmist reminds us of who he is and what he's about in the 107th Psalm. If you want to go ahead and turn with me there, I'm just going to read verse number one, and I'm going to share a couple of little thoughts, and then we're just going to do a, an open mic for whoever wants to make their way up here and just express gratitude to our Lord and Savior because we're reminded of that in the text. It says this in verse 1, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. How many of you believe that, man? I do. Man, is he good. He's so good. And I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised. And again, as Pastor Mike shared this morning, man, it's awesome how the Spirit of God just orchestrates verses and passages and even songs when it comes to what the praise team is revealing to us through praise and also through the preaching. <laughs> Goes on, he says in that same verse, for his mercy endureth forever. Man, he's a merciful God. Man, as he witnesses and he observes what's going on in this planet today, I know his heart breaks. He's a God of grace and he's a God of mercy, but as we've learned, as we've come to realize, as we've been sharing thoughts with you over this past year out of the letter to the Thessal the letters to the Thessalonians, as well as the book of Revelation on Wednesday nights, we live in a broken world. We live in a world where the adversary is nothing more than a squatter who has taken over this planet that God brought redemption for. That regardless though, and in spite of where we find ourselves and what we're going through in this journey and in this life, we need to be reminded each and every day to simply be grateful, to be thankful. In the New Testament, you are likened to God's temple, the tabernacle, if you will, in the Old Testament. And the very first, the very, very first thing that the priest would see as they would make their way into the outer court was this altar known as the altar of sacrifice, where the, also known as the brazen altar, where the sacrifices to the Lord were made before they could even begin to think about going and making their way into the most holy place. So God does an amazing thing in his word in connecting dots for us as it relates to that altar and what it represents. So imagine this gate, this eastern gate, and by the way, those gates are on your head today. It's called your eye gate. It's called your nose gate, your ear gate. Lift up your head, O ye gates, the Bible says in the 24th Psalm, and the King of glory will come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. But it's imperative that we open up those gates and realize what it is that God desires to reveal to us. And as these priests made their way into the tabernacle, the first object of furniture was this altar of sacrifice. Listen closely to these words. If you don't mind, Christine, could you bring up these words for me, please? In the 107th Psalm, you find these words in verse 21. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Oh, man, imagine if men would just praise him for his goodness. And it goes on, it says, and for his wonderful works to the children of men, and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of what? Thanksgiving. Man, the depth of that thought, of that phrase, the sacrifices of Thanksgiving revealed so much to us about what this weekend is about, what today is about. It's a sacrifice unto the Lord. When we come before him with grateful hearts, the psalmist writes in 
seven chapters, the seven chapters prior, and we're all familiar with the, this verse, Psalms 100 and verse 4, enter into his gates with what? With thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. That's what today is about for Ascent Bible Church. It's to give you, to give us an opportunity together to just praise him, just thank him, and to apply verse number 22. And let them, let them Verse 22, and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And the verse closes, and declare his works with rejoicing. I'm hoping and I'm praying that everybody in this room is grateful and thankful and rejoicing and ready and willing to declare whatever it is that the Lord has laid on your heart about what today represents. I don't know about you, and I can't speak for you, but man, I'm so grateful. I'm so, so grateful for who he is and for his goodness. He is so, so good. As I look around this room and some of the folks that I've, or we've been able to minister because of some things going on in your lives, I want you to know that God has used that trial and that tribulation to draw some of you and bring you to a place that you never imagined, and that's how he works. Those are his mighty works. This is how he transforms lives. This is how he changes lives. For what purpose? So that we could declare the goodness and the greatness of our almighty God. So with that said, without Further ado, is that what they say whenever they want somebody else to get out of the way? Who's got the hook to hook, get, get me out the, off from behind the uh, pulpit? But who wants to be first? Sonia, come on up. Sonia is up. Amen. Mike, check this? Yeah, we're good. Thanks, Dave. I got a halls in my mouth, so <laughs> if I make a little noise talking, I'm sorry. Um, when I first heard what we were going to um, do today, the first thing that came to my mind was when uh, God showed himself to me when I was in Youth with a Mission um, uh, in Amsterdam. And um, I had gone down by myself to the... Um, um, the uh, central station and was just sitting up on an area where people sit around and just watch people walk by. And as I did that, I saw this um, older homeless gentleman um, walking by and going up to each person and just looking them in the eye mm -hmm. and trying to get them to give them some money or mm -hmm give them some food or whatever, and then they would ignore him. They would just look away. So he'd go to the next person. And I saw him walk all around the room. Now, central stations are huge, you know, especially in Amsterdam. It's a city. So, well, you know that. But um, anyways, I kept seeing him going around. And I was at a point where I was basically out of money. Um, I had maybe 20 guilders which at that time was probably, I don't know, $30. But um, anyways, um, as he was coming around to my area where I was sitting at, I felt like God was saying, you need to get something for this guy. Hmm. He needs some food. Amen. He needs you or me. He needs me. And... Um, so as I watched him do this, go, go, go around, I ran over to this little area, took the, the last part of the money that I had, and 
uh, got a sandwich and a drink for him. And as he got to me, he looked at me, and, and I handed him the sandwich and the drink, and he looked at me with these blue eyes that were so much like Jesus. Mm -hmm. I had never, ever, ever seen that in anybody's life mm -hmm. um, where it was just, I, I knew, I knew that that was Jesus looking at me, that he was calling to me too. Mm -hmm. And I am so thankful for that because I, <laughs> it's something that has stayed with me and I've been able to share at different times, but I, I can still see those eyes. I can see Jesus' eyes, and I'm so thankful for that mm. because I know that no matter what I do, no matter how many mistakes I make, he's still looking at me, calling to me, and wanting me to keep following him and keep coming after him. Mm. So I'm Amen. thankful for that. Amen. Thank you, Sonia. Amen. Thank you so much, Sonia. Steve, do me a favor, everyone, as you make your way up here, introduce yourself and kind of maybe give a, a short little, tiny, short, short bio about who you might be. <laughs> My brother Steve, by the What's way. What's a bio? <laughs> What's a bio? <clears throat> Steve. <laughs> John's uh, brother, but let's keep that on the lowdown, please. Um, what I'd like to share with you are, are a couple of small verses. I'll keep this brief that I want to share with you. But in, in my life, especially in the last couple of years, they're, they're really profound. And um, it's what keeps me on the, on the kill. And I, and I have, I have them pinned on, on my little cubicle my, in my office at work. So it's, it's a daily couple of daily verses that I visit every every morning when I first thing I do when I get to work before you have to fire up everything <laughs> and start <clears throat> um, getting with the day right and, and as you know uh, our, our daily lives we tend to try to to focus on on you know what, what's the good stuff but you know it's it's the tough stuff that's really what life is so anyway second Corinthians um, 4 verses 8 and 9 we are troubled on every side yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And I always have to ask myself, why is that? Why is that? So with that, with, with that said, it's because of John 16, 33, right? Does everybody remember John 16, 33? These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Amen. In the world ye shall have tribulation. That's life. But be of good cheer. I have overcome yeah. the world. Amen. And yeah. then with that, I follow up with, again, it's short. James 1, 2, and 3. My brethren, count it all joy. Man, isn't that a paradox, right? Count it all joy when you fall in, into diverse temptations. And, and in this context, temptations means these tribulations, these trials, these challenges that we talk about. Knowing this, that trying of your faith worketh patience. And in that sense, right, it's persevering, man, persevering through life, using him. So I, I, I am thankful for the Lord's words, man. He, mm. he puts in there, and he just reminds us every day. Um, and it's tough out there for each and every one of us, but he's overcome. That's be joy. Yeah. Persevere. Okay? Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Awesome. Anybody else? Come on up. You know, that, uh, that thought that Steve just shared, which is, and again, I, I know what he's been through these last couple of years and a huge trial that he's had to personally face, but I'm reminded of how it is that God works. If you remember this passage from our study a few months ago in 1 Thessalonians 5, Paul wrote these words to a church just like ours. He says, in everything, give thanks. As believers, we often th are grateful for things, right? Thank you, Lord, for food. Thank you, Lord, for the Chiefs beating the Broncos again and again and again and all that stuff. And they're going to beat the Raiders today. John, I want you to know 
But we're always thankful for things. But he, Paul says, in everything, give thanks. Even in our trials, we are to be grateful. And man, if we could maintain that perspective and that heart, this is why we titled our service today, The Power of a Grateful Heart. It is so powerful when we're able to just focus on the Lord with a grateful heart because it gets our eyes off ourselves. And this is what Paul says in that context. He says, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God through Christ Jesus. Are you ready for this? Concerning you. It's for our benefit. It's for our good. Whenever we're able to just look to him, maintain a grateful heart, and know and realize that he's conforming us into the image of his son as we go through that trial and that tribulation. So again, that what he just shared speaks volumes to his experience these last couple of years. And I'll let him share whatever that is at some point, but he's been through a lot. Hi. Um, my name is Diana, known as Diana, and to my husband, Dia. <laughs> but, um, and your last name, young lady? Quintana. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of nervous right now. <laughs> Usually I'm not. Um, it's been, um, I was talking to Philip this morning about things that have happened to us in the last two years um, and how tragedy can happen like that or your turn of life. It, it just happens. Like you're sleeping one moment, the next moment, moment you're, something's happened and, and it comes quick. Uh, but um, what kept me up was the strength of the Lord. I thank you, Father, mm -hmm. with all my heart and with all my soul. You kept me. He, he kept me. He kept me alive. Because to tell you the truth, I was near suicide. I wanted just to end it. It was awful. And um, with the help of my husband, close to me, and the strength of all of you who prayed for me, who prayed for my husband and I, well, um, if you would have known me at age 20, in my 20s, I would today be your enemy. Hmm. Because there were so many that I hurt in, during that time before I became came to know the Lord, and there are many that still hate me uh, because of what I did, and I pray for them, but my strength comes, I thank God that he was there for me, this church was here for me, all of you here prayed, those that had, know what happened, and what happened was our house burned down, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> And, and, um, and it was hard to get back on our feet for a little while. But the strength of all of you who helped and supported us and prayed for us and, and, and gave us hope. And for people of organizations like r, &R mm -hmm. and um, life groups that we hold on to that uh, support us and pray for us and lift us up. If, and um, that's where my strength comes from, from the Lord first and from all of you and my husband being next to me. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Dan. You know, I often share that when uh, the Lord replaced him, when the Lord ascended in Acts chapter 1 and verse Number eight, he replaced himself with three things. We know about the Lord's Supper and how he prepared them for his departure. Unbeknownst to them, they didn't fully grasp its significance. But um, in fact, in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23, the Bible speaks about how we're created, how we're created as a being. You're a body, you're a soul, and you're a spirit. And he replaced himself with his spirit for our spirit. He replaced himself 
with his word for our soul and he replaced himself with the body of Christ for our bodies to take care of one another. And again, I'm so grateful for so many of you and um, Ken Dettelbach, who has been a huge blessing to this church. And she mentioned R&R, but it's actually R&R for vets. And uh, Philip, being a vet, they stepped up with finances and with just work and support. Terry Northway and fixing their house. So many of you showed up there consistently to rebuild their home, and today they have a home um, that's been restored. So just, man, that's what the body of Christ should be about. So who's up next? Jerry? I can't do this. Okay, well, you can do it from down there. Can you hear me? There. Um, I'm grateful because three years ago when I came here, my husband had just died, and the church I was going to basically deserted me. Mm. They were not supportive. They were not helpful. Then my sister introduced me to John and Larry, and we became members of this church. Pam... Um, was singing in the choir at that time. I would come early, and Mike uh, was helpful when we would come and listen to him pray, praise Jesus. But I am grateful for this church more than anything that it gave me encouragement to look into the Word. The Word has saved me. And that's the only thing that I can think of that I'm more grateful for. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. All right. I, I, Larry keeps pointing at someone, but I'm not sure who. Come on up. Charlie, Charlie come on up. Those of you that want to share some um, a, a, a testimony of gratitude, just feel free to make your way up. We can just kind of get in line if you'd like. Good to see you, buddy. Doing okay? Good to see you, man. God bless you. Thank you. My name is Charles Edelwin. What I'm thankful for is the people who have been released from the capture of these terrorists. We should be so thankful for that and be praying for all of them to be freed. And also, I pray for Israel. But when I'm praying for Israel, I think about the fact that maybe they weren't as faithful to God as they should have been, which is why they're going through this. In this country, we have kind of the same problem, in my opinion. We need to be praying and sharing our love of Jesus. I wear this yarmulke. I'm not Jewish. I wear it because I support Israel, and I want anybody that I walk around to know that. I believe that we're all Israelis because our Father is Jesus, and He is a Jew. So, please, pray for Israel. Amen. Thank you, Charlie. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. Anybody else? Okay. Terry's, oh, okay. Good morning, my name is Clyde Hayes, and I got some verses here I want to read from um, Ecclesiastes chapter 4. It says here, two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat, but how can one be warm alone? 
and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a three-four, threefold cord is not quickly broken. So I'm thankful because of the fellowship that we have here. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for our life group. We've been together I don't know, years, 10, 15 mm -hmm. years. I'm thankful for that because we we're always there for each other. I'm thankful for all my new friends here for how you've come beside us. Thank you very much for my pastors, Mike and Larry and, and John. Thank you for all that you've taught us and shown us and accepted us. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, Lorraine and I celebrated our 45th wow. anniversary. So I'm thankful that the Lord intervened because if it was left up to me, we, <laughs> we'd probably be separated by now years ago. So I thank the Lord for how he has kept us together and blessed us and just everything that he has done. Thank you, guys, and God bless you. Wow. Thank you, Clyde. Wow, 45 years. Lorraine, you are a saint, my lady. Six. We'll be 46 this January, Sheila and me. Awesome. I was raised in an agnostic household by uh, rabid Bronco fans. <laughs> and by the way, my all idol is fallen, but so is yours going to fall. Right. <laughs> you know, in fact, the Broncos, did you notice they slouched Kansas City a couple of weeks? Did you see that? But anyway, I want to share something. Um, there was no way I was going to be a servant of Jesus Christ. I was raised by rich folks. And, and uh, you know, I was suicidal in college and in the Air Force. I tried to kill myself. I really gave it a try. Don't tell my brother in the back, but I even quit the Air Force. I resigned. I, you know, I can't be a veteran and get the benefits because I gave him a 30-day notice and quit. But, you know, uh, I went into the hippie life and got into the new age and a bunch of drugs and, and all that kind of, and a bunch of sin. You can figure that one out. And uh, uh, I wasn't a prime candidate for this salvation. But somehow I started to notice something. Some of the people on the hippie commons commune, I was on nine hippie communes, right? And some of the people on the commune started to talk about uh, hey, the end days, and have you heard about this Jesus and Jesus prophecy? This was during those Jesus years. I was in the Haight-Ashbury and, and all that, but I didn't get saved back then. Uh, I went through the commune life for a while. Some of you are nodding like, okay, we know what you're talking about. We smoked our dope too, yeah, you know. But, you know, what happened is I began to see something, and I'm still seeing it, and this is what I want to be thankful for. I started to see, like Psalm 8 says, that God was actually mindful mm. of me personally. Mm. I used to live up above Mora, New Mexico, in the mountains. We could see all the stars, and I started to believe that there is a God that made all this. And somehow it became aware to me that he knew me personally, that he was kind of drawing me. And I used to walk to, to, to herd the goats, the left foot praise, the right foot God. And I was trying to chant the Jesus chant and, and this and that, but I wasn't quite ready to give it all up, you know. But eventually, um, I accepted Jesus. And, and I started to notice, even now, even lately I've noticed, that God, the maker of this entire universe, he's actually leading me personally closer to him. This is so fantastic. I just can't sometimes believe it. You know, you, you read about this galaxies and how many light years, what is it? The farthest stars they're finding out are a trillion light years from here? Are you kidding? I can't even comprehend it. And yet God says, Terry, I'm calling you. You're, you're, you're fantasizing, get back to prayer. 
Terry, I have a deeper thing for you. Turn off the Broncos. <laughs> Even though they beat Kansas City, turn them off. They're not worth your time because you're getting old. You're almost 80. I turn 80 in a year and two months. Wow. And so, you know, for all of us, let's get close to him. Yeah. Let's give him thanks. And I got into the thing, I will share one last thing. Recently, I've been getting into, well, how do I abide in Jesus, you know? The mind is so wanders, and, and you can't, you know, you say, I'm going to walk with you today, Lord. I want to pray unceasingly, and your mind just is gone, you know? And God showed me thanksgiving, worship, surrender, intercession for others, and I forget the fifth one right now, five things that I needed to do. If I wasn't doing one, do the other. If you don't feel like worshiping, give thanks. If you're not into giving thanks, meditate on scripture. If that's not working, but constantly during the day, even at work, kind of little ejaculations of praise, little bits of, of surrender. God, I give you my life again today. Your surrender has to be an ongoing thing. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. But the Greek is, be being filled. So I'm just encouraging us all, be thankful, be filled with the Spirit, and walk with Him, because God's got more. And that's the exciting thing to me is, God says, look, you've been a Christian for 47 years, but you're still on pablum. You're still on baby food. I want you to go deeper, Amen. that deeper call. Wow. So I'm thankful. Amen. Thank you, Jerry. Hi, I'm Mikhail Salazar. So I want to thank Ascent Bible Church for, for everything. Uh, it's been a year I've been here. The main thing is for about a year and a half, I went to every single church to try and get somebody to come out to the skate park. And they never did. And, and I got thrown into this book right away, like in a short period that I was here. And I had a brother, James, from Christian Life all summer coming and helping me. So I was another church. Um, I got Larry Sosa and um, Ebony and Vinita, 80 years, 80 years old, to go out with me. I, I got Gilbert. He called me up. He goes, that's not my thing. And then two hours later, he's like, what do you need? <laughs> and I'm just like, what? <laughs> And it was like surprised, and then Amber uh, came the last month um, and stuff. So I want to read this scripture. It's in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. Oh, and the word was God, and with God, and the word was God, and in Him was life, and life was the light of man. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. These kids, I went there, I tried everything to try and, and, and give a, a skateboard away and, and, they, and three by five cards to memorize and everything. They would just shut me down. And I was like, how do I get this word out, God? And I just started praying and praying. So I built this box and Amber, I was going to hire this guy to graffiti it, write it with scriptures. And Amber, was, she's an art teacher. She was like, just pull it out and have, have them start tagging it now. And I go, now? And she goes, yeah, make it a community box. So these kids started tagging this box around that big that I made. It was all sanded, really pretty. And, and they did. They, they just started tagging it, you know. And, and, and they had to get a scripture and read it and spend 20 minutes tagging it. Then this kid wanted to tag it and this kid wanted to tag it. Then these kids would come and they would say, what does that say? I, he goes, I did that one. I go, well, read it. So they read it, and here they are reading the word of God to their, to their peers. And there was not mean, ask him. And before you know it, the word of God is there in their hearts, and they're hearing it. Amen. You know, there, it's, it was amazing, you know. And it's like from, from setting up a table with watermelon and honeydew, there was, there was these girls, Ebony, and, and me and James were there, and there was, we went to Sunday night, and there was nobody there. 
And then they started praying. And guess what? These three girls popped out of a box of cereal. And there they were, you know. And, and, and I'm like, I went up there. And they were from Albuquerque. They took the train up. And they were there. And, and I started, I said, do you want some honeydew? And we started cutting them some honeydew and getting them some water. I sat on this thing and I gave a, a little Bible study while they, they were putting me on YouTube for 20 minutes. I wow. preached on, 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 on King David, how he was a great warrior, but he was also a great sinner. But that's, the, that's God's grace. And these, kid, these kids, I told them, it was your appointed time for you to come to Dave from Albuquerque to be here. I go, I never come to the skate park. But you're here and this was an appointed time. And God is doing so much good, and, and this church is backing me up, and I am so grateful for that. And I met this guy, Daniel, at the men's Bible study on Monday, and, and God has opened the door to go to San Diego once a month to go have a Bible study and help my brother Daniel. Mm. And it's just amazing that, that the skateboard, I pray to God that more cities open up and more, more hearts open up to this, but... But man, thank you, Sam Bible Church, for, for showing me maturity and just being grateful for being here. I, I was so militant, and I had a heart that I always told people what to do. And now the Holy Spirit is the one that's telling me what to do, to soften my heart and, and to fall on my knees and to use that prayer room over there and, and just see God and his love and his, you know, I had a broken heart, and his, 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 his grace has never failed, and, mm -hmm. and it's healed me through, through so much, and, and I almost left the last five weeks. I wasn't here, and I was just going through something, and, I, and God said, go back, Mikael. Just when you're starting to be pruned, you take off, and I was like, you're right, God. You're right. This hurts, and the pruning hurts. He's like, well, I'm going to prune you some harder, Amen. through harder times. And, and you know what? We have to go through the furnace, and we're going to be refined. It's not fun to go through the furnace. But Pastor John told me to read Romans 5, and I did. I read it, and I, I understand the furnace and stuff. But whatever you're going through, don't quit. It's not worth it. Get back up. Look at my brother Gilbert. He came back, and, and he fell, and he fell, but he came back, and he let his pride down because we have an enemy that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But the main thing that I've learned is, is, to, is to receive forgiveness and to, to give forgiveness, and that's something I never really was good at, and it's only through this body of Christ and opening up my heart to prayer that it has taken place, and I just I love you guys. I appreciate it, all of you, from the bottom of my heart. Mad love to all of you. Amen. Thank you, Michael. That's awesome. Ken. Yes. You, you can stand up here if you'd like. <laughs> I didn't figure I'd do this, right? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Ken Dettelback. I'm, what is it, eight years in the church now, nine years? Okay. And uh, got serious about two years ago. Um, uh, I'm a two tour Vietnam vet, and I um, wanted to relate a couple things that I'm thankful for, and that is uh, there is 11 in my immediate family, and uh, I'm thankful for my wife who supports me and supports helping others, which is what our life is today. We 100% mm -hmm. helping other vets have a better life. So I'm very thankful for that. I'm thankful for... Um, there's an old Apache. I lived on the reservation for a year and a half when I came back, on the Apache reservation. There's an old saying that, uh, uh, thank you, Mother Earth, for a solid foundation, and thank you, Father's Son, for lighting the path of life for me in the future. 
And thank you, Sister Water, uh, for quenching my thirst while I'm on the path of life. And thank you, Brother Wind, for always being at my back. Um, the Sister Water thing is sort of interesting because, can you hold this a minute? Of course. Um, in Isaiah, Larry, you're going to love this, okay? <laughs> uh, by the way, Larry and I spend a little time on the gospel every Wednesday, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, when the poor and needy seek water, this is, uh, this is Isaiah, uh, 41, 17. When the poor and needy need water, there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open up rivers in high places, fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so everyone should have water. Everyone should be free of thirst. Um, and I'm very thankful for this church because uh, I equate church to family, and the church is a family. And in the book of Job, I think they say that everyone needs more than one. They need a group, okay? They need a family. They need support. Um, so... I'm thankful for you all, and I don't know how the heck I found this place, but <laughs> I <do. laughs> and, yeah. and the support that they've given to the veteran community is unequal, uh, and um, so I thank you all for who you are. Amen. Thank you, Ken. You know, I often refer to the book of Acts. Um, we'll let Deja, I'll, I'll tell you, Ed, Ed first, then Deja, okay? She can go first. You want to come first? Okay. I often refer to the book of Acts whenever we talk about how God has brought so many of us together. And it's, it's amazing, his providence. Uh, I often refer to how God uses people, places, and events to do his will and to bring us together. And that's why I love that book, because you see God bringing um, people together in an incredible way, this young lady being one of them. And uh, Deja, this is for you. Hi. Hello. Sorry, I'm not used to this. I'm a little shy. <laughs> but yeah, my name is Deja, like Boo, if you have a hard time remembering that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I wrote a poem about like two weeks after I got saved. And I got mm -hmm. saved three days after my friend, Christian, he's not here tonight, but he really, he helped me like get acquainted with God. Um, and I, it was very beautiful of how it happened. Everything just worked out and I actually found myself and my purpose. Mm -hmm. I was very lost before and I just felt like I was the pen and the Holy Spirit was the writer. Ah. So this is the poem I'm gonna read. It's called, In the Name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray one day soon to feel as if I have gotten it all right. That one day seems to feel impossible. However, whenever we feel doubt, the best for us to do is to go into the word and reread the parables. I thank you, our Lord, for this beautiful life. I wouldn't have been touched by the Holy Spirit if it wasn't for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Before I opened the door for you to come in, I had a broken light. I was trying to fix it on my own, but I heard my friend tell me to open the door I submitted and I was reborn into a light so bright. Our Heavenly Father, you have been consistent with your unfailing love. I am blessed to be your only to be your child covered in your only son's blood. Forever grateful for the gift of salvation given to me and my brothers and sisters. May we pray for our loved one's salvation so that so that they don't end up at a different destination. May we love, stand out, and serve to the King of the universe. For you, our Lord, 
are the only one whose word shall be preserved. We thank you, Lord, for that we get to see another day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Yeah, God's been really, really good to this church recently with these young folks that have found the Lord, and we're looking forward to revealing their very unique and special purpose in this body and his plan for the rest of their life and their journey. It's like we were talking about the other day, right, in uh, Ephesians chapter number uh, 2, verse number 10. You are his workmanship. You are his song. And uh, he's not done with any of us, right? There's more to this life than this life. And I'm going to beat this one to death till he comes back from this pulpit. Uh, He didn't bring you this far, Deja, to bring you this far. He's got a plan and he's got a purpose. Thank you, sweetheart, for sharing your heart. I love you. I love you. Okay, does John look nervous that I'm up here? (laughs) Okay. That's what, that's what Joel Olstein said. He goes, you go up there, tell something funny. Get everybody kind of loose. So that's what I'm doing. Just a Joel Osteen, because I know that John likes him a lot. I don't What's know it? who he is. <laughs> me or Joel Osteen? Oh, me. Okay, yeah, he does. I just met John this morning. So he's taking a chance. But anyways, so much to be grateful for yeah. for, for me. And if I break down crying, just ignore it, Okay. <laughs> So about two and a half years ago, um, and I was going through a lot of turbulence. I mean, a lot. And God gave me this, it it was weird. This Bible study formed, and then I don't want to name the people who formed it. And then they just said, well, here it is. You teach it. Mm -hmm. And I knew God wanted me to teach. But I I was the ultimate, I, I mean, I was the absolute introvert of all introverts. I know it's hard to believe if you listen to me or if you uh, ever talk with me, but it was hard for me to talk. It was hard for me to get in front of people. I mean, right now what you're seeing here is a miracle compared to people who knew me at Calvary Chapel, right? Yeah. (laughs) I would always hide in the back. I mean, I still do. But anyways, he came to this wonderful group of people and it was amazing. And then um, I remember a couple months afterwards, I said to the guys out, we'd break up into groups. I said to the guys in the group, if this really is from God, we're going to be attacked. This Sunday, that Sunday in this church, I started feeling bad. So I went out to my car, and there's a friend waiting for me to talk. And I'm like, oh, man, I can barely... I'm, I'm about to black out. And so he started praying. And about the 40 minutes into the prayer, I woke up into the hospital. And what happened was I had blacked out. My head slammed against the road out there. And the ambulance came and got me, you know, woke up with a bloody pillow and all that. Um, and I had COVID, Okay. And the next thing I know, I got out of there, but then I got worse and worse. And what happened was they had to come to my house and take me to the hospital. I was in there for a week, okay? And I was on maximum oxygen. I was told I was faking it, okay? And it was, people would come by. And it was just, everybody told me, they tell me later, and I thought, oh, I'm okay, and they, would, they said, said to me later, Ed, we thought you were going to die mm. the way you looked. But I made it back, and then afterwards, I was totally abandoned. So I just sat there and said, I'm just going to lay on this bed and die. And I'm serious about that. I would not call anybody. And God sent just the right people by at just the right time. I'm trying to use my left arm here because you'll find out why in a second. He sent just the right people by at just the right time. Alita <laughs> was one of them. 
because I was just gonna, because I couldn't get up to fix a mill. I would literally black out. And for me to go 10 foot to my bathroom, I mean, I did black out and slammed against the floor, okay? But you just get up and you just keep going, all right? And then I, even when I was going to work um, after that episode, by the time I got to the end of all of free, my oxygen blood saturation level was below 40, 40%. And I had to tote this big, what's those machines called, the big blue boxes that produce oxygen? Yeah, whatever. I had to tote that in the car myself. I mean, it was an ordeal. And then, so I keep going, and that was right after I said, God will attack us. Okay? And then, right after that, it's just like everybody in the group went through something. Okay? And May 29th, Another miracle. I was on my roof working on my swamp cooler. Now, after, afterwards, everybody gives me the great advice. Old men shouldn't get up on the roof by themselves. Well, thanks. You know, after that. But anyways, I fell off. And I landed 10 foot down on rock work. Okay? And I woke up in the ambulance. All right? I do that a lot. Woke up in the ambulance. And I broke 10 ribs punctured my left lung, and broke off my collarbone. Didn't break it, I broke it off. That was the easy part. Next day, they put 10 metal bands around me. But the easy part, that was e a week later, they reattached my collarbone. But then my left arm went dead for like four months. I could not move it at all. And so the orthopedic surgeon got afraid. He was afraid I was going to sue him, and everybody was telling me, sue him, sue him. But that's not my style. And so what happened was, um, basically, he gave me some other guy, and he said, well, hopefully it'll come alive. Two days later, it started to twitch. And now, when I could only do that before, I can now do this. So God is good. And I can tell you guys something is that um, God has given me that group for two and a half years, and he's just recently given me another small little Bible study group to, to study in or to basically teach. And I want to tell you guys, it's so important. I know the life groups, and I would really recommend those very, very highly. I mean, Sunday mornings are great, but there's nothing like having a small Bible group of Christians that you could fellowship with and learn with. Okay, so um, God has just been so good. We live in the age of apostasy, okay, um, at this point. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. It comes just before the man of sin is revealed. And he's talking about the church. It's the great falling away. And it's only going to get worse. And God has given us the body to unite to, to strengthen one another, and to become strong and learn about him. Acts 2.42, right? Yeah, and I should call one of my, uh, one of the Tuesday nighters up and make them recite that, okay? But it revolves around four things, okay? And we need to be, it's, I know we're all busy. We're all busy, but this is so important. And so anyways, I was just back there minding my own business and I, 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 every once I get that urge from God, you know, that little nudge. He's like, get up there. And so I'm up here. And I think I've had my say. And I'm so thankful for this church and for you, John. I really am. You know, they came into my life at just the right time. And I'm very, very thankful for everyone here. So praise God for everything. Amen. Thank you. I think we have time for one more. Anybody? Who wants to come up? Bernadette. You want to come all the way up or you want to, what do you think? Yeah. I've seen you ride your bike. You can easily climb up here. Hi, everybody. My name is Bernadette Aragon. And um, me and Nick uh, run the kids' ministry. And we're thankful for that opportunity. I was just thinking back yesterday. I was doing some cleaning. And um, 
remembering when I was a little kid, I actually had had an experience with Jesus, and it was very powerful. And um, my dad actually became a believer when he was in prison, and he came back so on fire from God, you know, when he got out of prison, and um, just stirred up my heart as a little kid. And so it's really cool, like a full circle now, like I'm working with little kids, and I just pray that, you know, God will burn that fire in their hearts, you know, too. And um, so it's so cool because when I was thinking about the story um, of my life, my um, baby brother died, and my dad was like a full-on believer, and I was remembering he used to sing this song. It was an old song, um, I Shall Not Be Moved. Mm -hmm. And he used to just stand, and he had a really nice singing voice, and he would just stand and sing that, but... um, My brother died, and it just shook his whole world. And um, he was very devastated, and he went back into a really dark, dark place, party scene, you know, and he really became seven times more vile. And um, it it was hard, and there was a lot of domestic violence in my house. And at the time, I was going to church with my cousin Angela. She goes to church here. And she would drive and pick me up and take me to church. And um, so I was just praying for my dad and praying that he would come back. He started doing cocaine. And it was terrifying to live in the house with a drug addict like that. But um, I remember just as a little kid, I got so mad at God. And I was like, you're not answering my prayers. You know, and I just remember getting so, and I was thinking about this. And I got so mad at God, and I just hardened my heart. And um, then... We fast forward a few years, and there were some really cool people. Some of you might know them, um, Mike and Suzanne Ramos. And we were little kids, and my brother was friends with their son, and they started taking us to church with them. And I was very hard in my heart, but I knew there was a cute boy at the church that I liked. So I wanted to go for that reason. But that night, God had an appointment with me, and I went forward, and I and I received Christ, and it was so neat because that hardness in the little kid's heart, you know, you don't think little kids are sinners, but I I was, you know, and I'm just so thankful that um, God saved me that night, and he's been with me ever since, you know, and life hasn't always been perfect, but I just feel like he's always that source of strength. He's always that main source, and I'm just so thankful for all that he's brought me through and the testimony that I have is because of him, you know, and just that I was even survived the childhood was so scary. Um, And I'm just so, so thankful. I'm thankful for this church. I'm thankful for Pastor John, especially. He's really helped Nick. Me and Nick have been together for a while and um, he has just really invested the word of God. So thank you so much. Nick knows the word and he calls me on it now because I've been to Christian for a really long time. And he's like, wait a second. If you're really a Christian. Like, why are you not believing in God? Why are you so anxious? You know, and so I'm like, oh, gosh, you know the word now. <laughs> but anyways, I'm just so thankful for this church. I'm thankful for all that he's brought me through. And I just want to encourage everybody, you know, just really trust in God and just really get in that personal relationship with him. And he he's amazing. He's the best. So thank you. Thank you, Bernadette. Awesome. Love you. All right, Pastor Mike, um, should we close with this? What an awesome service. Again, thank, thank you each and every one of you who shared a part of your story, a part of your life. What a blessing you are. And again, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you as find it a privilege and an honor to uh, to pastor this very precious body. We love you. We thank you. And again, let's just praise our Lord.
Okay, just a couple announcements and we'll be wrapped up. God is good, I'll tell you that. And he has been faithful all my life. I know that too, even before I knew him. I want to welcome you to Ascent Bible Church. Thank you for worshiping with us today. If this is your first time here, you should have received a small bag with several gifts inside. Among other things, there are also two cards, one pink, one blue. Blue for you to register, contact information so we can follow up, let you get to know us, get to know you. Also a pink card, if you have a prayer request, please fill it out. Drop either or both cards in the offering box just off the carpet behind the red chairs to the left on your way out. Wednesday night, Revelation Bible Study continues. John will be back up here with two hours of information and interpretation of the book of Revelation. If you want to know what's going on in the world, you got to know Revelation. And it doesn't matter if you haven't been to any of the previous passages, he's got something for you this week. Also want to let you know that our grief share group is starting up on Thursday. If you have lost a loved one recently and you are still grieving that, number one, it's not surprising, and it could even be years since you've lost them and you're still grieving, please see Vicki Wafer or Janine Robinson, Janine Robinson, and they can sign you up. We have 15 sets of study materials, and if we go beyond 15, we'll order more. So it'll be starting Thursday, 13 weeks in a row, 6 till 8 p.m. Well, isn't that this coming Thursday? Yeah, yeah it's here already, Vicki. <laughs> Better check that calendar, huh? Okay, so it is this Thursday. It is this Thursday. Woo! Talk about a shock to her system. All right. Pals, women, getting together this Saturday. Uh, normally, you start at 9.30. We're starting at 9 o'clock. There is a wreath craft that you'll be doing. If you didn't sign up, Larry, there's still there's a sign-up sheet on the table with Randy Cohn. Please sign up so they can make sure you have materials. And you're starting at 9 because we're also... Next slide. We're also having Summit on Saturday. The reason for that is typically Summit is on the second Saturday of the month. And believe it or not, December is here on Friday, huh? So on the 9th, though, we are having a training session, an all-day training session for dealing with active shooters and, and for first responders. Everybody who works in children's ministry and any ministry is really required to be here so that we can make this place as safe as we can in the craziness of the world around us. So since that's happening on the 9th, we are moving Summit also to the first Saturday. Instead of starting at 8.30 for Summit and 9.30 for PALS, we're splitting the difference and starting at 9 having breakfast. The women will meet in the fellowship room right after breakfast. The men will meet here. And so that is what's happening next Saturday. We invite both men and women, especially if you've never been to one of those sessions. This is a chance to get to know people from your gender, drop close together, pray with each other, and just study the word together. Next week, Thessalonians, John will continue his how-to series. He will be in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. He hasn't even given me the title yet, so I just put some dots there. But Come on, come next Sunday. Uh, if this is your first time here, this was a special kind of service where we give the mic over to people. But John will be in the pulpit next Sunday, and you will enjoy his teaching. So please come back and give him a shot. These are some pictures from our first annual Thanksgiving luncheon. We were here from 1 to 3 dining on an amazing amount of turkey, dressing, mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce. 
We had pies. We had cakes. It, it was amazing. 50 people signed up. 46 people showed up. It was really a great time. Like I said, this is our first annual. We are looking to have the second annual next year. So all of you people who had to cook this year for yourself, just grab a pie or something and show up next year, and you'll get to eat just as well as if you cooked. Okay, Abba's Helping Hands. This is for those of you who are regular here. This is not for the first timers, okay? Our people in Israel, they are really struggling to get food, medical supplies, warm clothing for the winter, etc. for the people who've been displaced. That's Abba's Helping Hands. We've been working with them since 2011. They are a legitimate ministry who takes care of the needy people over there. I mentioned last week that we were going to take up a love offering. We are going to pass the basket, I believe. Tim, didn't you have a basket to pass? Yeah. So, no pressure. Many of you have already given either online or dropped your offering in the box, and that's cool. But if you haven't had a chance to give generously to help Abbas, their need is in the thousands of dollars. And they are struggling so hard. Their heart is breaking over not being able to give the help that they want to give to people. So please give as generously as you can. If you didn't bring a check today, um, you can also get online, ascentbible.church, go to our, our online giving. Abba's is listed there specifically, and you can give directly to them. We really want to help them as much as we can. And we typically, you know, we don't do pass the basket type offerings here. If, you, if the Lord is moving you to give, you can give by dropping your offering in the box. But this time, we want to make sure we count this specifically for Abbas. <coughs> we have a prayer room right over here. We will be there to pray with you if you have any specific prayer needs. We have a pantry in the back through the double doors and the next set of double doors. If you know anybody who needs food, please stop back get food for them, and deliver it as a gift from the Lord. That's part of our ministry here, and we like to help our neighbors as much as we can. And finally, because we had so many pies and cakes, and because Kathy Pino also arranges on the last Sunday of the month to have coffee and cookies here, no need to rush out. We have cookies, we have cakes, we have pies, we have brownies, we have coffee. Just go through the double door, spend some time getting to know each other, enjoy the fellowship of the saints. God bless you. Have a great week.